Thank you for staying with Daybreak. The conversation begins right now. We are calling it the final push. Just five days. The polls. What does it boil down to? Oliver Kipchumba is here with us, advocate of the High Court. Thank you so much for making time. Professor Alfred Omenya is here, urban development expert. Thank you so much for making time. And Professor Haman Manyora, political commentator, is also joining us here in Studio Sante Sana for making time. Let's start off with the front page of the Daily Nation. Raila, favorite to win, says poll. First round victory depends on 7% undecided voters. Two polls released yesterday they indicate that Raila has gained over Ruto in the last one month after statistical ties in the previous popularity tests. All right, Kipchumba, the polls are here with us again. Yes. What is your analysis? Three out of four are placing Raila as a favorite to win if elections were held today. But the other caveat is that uh, Trevor, the, for the last two elections, opinion polls have been wrong. So even as we consume this one, we must consume it with a, with a little flashback of history that they have failed us twice. So I, I also have seen other polls. I think I have been uh, able to see other seven which say differently. So at the end of the day, Maybe the question would be why these ones that point in another direction. But at the end of the day, there is something that is really interesting in the opinion polls is the number of undecided voter, uh, voters who we can still see. But it is also difficult to talk about the undecideds because how we do our polling is such that if you do not respond, we take you as an undecided. That puts it a bit complicated. And we know why some people will not respond. At the current political climate is an interesting one. You might never know who is asking you your political opinion. So that puts and makes the whole thing dice. Yeah, but does it concern you, though, that even the undecided you're talking about is between 4 to 7%? So no, even, no. If, even if all of them vote for Ruto statistically, which is not really practical in terms of statistics, it would still not be at the 51 plus 1. What I can tell you, what, what I can tell you, Trevor, is that this election will be won on first round. Notwithstanding how the polls are looking here, the election will be won on the first round. By who? By from the polls I have seen that have been consistent for the last seven months by William Root. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Professor Menya. <laughs> and actually, I can even tell you yeah. with exactitude how, 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 how the percentage. Yeah, uh, what is the percentage win? At fifty-three point one. 53.1 <laughs> yes. for Ruto. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Prof, what do you make of the opinion polls? Three of them Trevor, have placed Raila. Of course, I come from the academy and, and, and sciences, and I believe in the polls. Yeah. Um, despite what... Kipchumba. Uh, uh, Kipchumba uh, yeah, is, uh, is, is talking about. And uh, just a slight correction. Those polls have um, both undecided and people who do, did not answer questions. Yeah. They're separated. Yes, so of course, if you, if you consider all of them undecided, then the undecided even goes bigger. But um, um, again, what is interesting with those polls is um, who's doing the polls themselves. I mean, um, it's important to look at the pollsters. And the two polls that came out yesterday are, are significant in that way that um, uh, is Ipsos, a scene of it, that is uh, relatively respected. And then. Uh, Info track. Uh, uh, yes, th then we had InfoTrack, yeah. then we had Nation. And TIFA also. Uh, yeah, and, 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 and all of them show that uh, there's a mere candidate is ahead. The other interesting thing within those, with, with those polls is that uh, they are, they're saying it is outside of, um, uh, uh, of um, uh, you know, stat st statistically, uh, statistically um, uh, how do you say, um, there's no statistical contest as to who will win, the outside uh, of that. So they're, they're basically giving Raila a clear win. Uh, You're looking at um, 49 uh, to, to 41. Um, the third thing I want to say about the polls is the trend of, of the polls. These polls are not new. And if you look at all of them, including uh, the one uh, Mwishimua <laughs> uh, Kipchumpa is talking about, uh, they've shown that um, uh, the Kenya Kwanzaa candidate, Ruto, has been coming down from January, you know, so the trend in all the polls has shown that, uh, you know, Ruto has been coming down yeah. uh, for, for the last eight months. So I don't know how, what will happen that will then change the trajectory of the polls. So yes, when, when you're reading uh, the polls and we're reading the, the science of it, we are not just looking at um, the final figures yeah. that have been put there. 
We are looking at all these things. We are looking at the trends. We are looking at the patterns. We are looking at when it changed and so on. R mind you, I mean, uh, Ruta has been re leading these polls for the last uh, four years. Yeah. In fact, it is, it is just uh, in, in, in around April this year. In fact, it is with the, with the naming of, um, of Martha Karua as uh, Raila's running mate that then Raila, Raila started developing this trajectory. Yeah. And Raila's trajectory has been going up actually throughout. And the question for us is that uh, why should it go down? For now, I don't see any parameter outside there yeah. that would warrant uh, that trajectory to go down. Okay. Likewise, I would ask the same question of, uh, of Ruto's polling. Why should they go up? <laughs> Again, I've not seen any trajectory yeah. in the last, uh, there's no, nothing unusual. There is no new information. There's nothing strange that's happening. The presidential debate was dispensed with and so on. So I don't see any event that would actually make his polls go up. Mm. So uh, I, I, as far as I'm concerned, in fact, I, again, I agree, I agree, I agree with uh, Oliver that uh, it'll be one in the first round. And if we consider the undecided, even if we split them 50-50, uh, uh, Raila will still win, in fact, with close to 54%, because now he's at 49, yeah. uh, you know, not, not, notwithstanding the undecided. So you're giving this to Raila, first round? First round, okay. Raila. Professor Manor? Uh You know, polls are like, uh, like a football match. Yeah. They tell you where we are, uh, this, is, this, is, this appears to be the picture. Mm. So with uh, uh, the, 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 the game getting to 90 minutes, Mm. Raila is ahead, mm. uh, maybe 2 1. Now, that doesn't mean Ruto cannot win the match. Mm. People have done worse things than that. Mm. People have been down even three, mm. five minutes to time, they equalize and they, they win the game. So it's good if you are a candidate to accept the polls could be an indicator of what's going Correct. on. That's true. Not necessarily perfect. They have never mm. been perfect mm. anyway, not just Kenya. Correct. The, the, the most recent history is in America where they got it so wrong mm. about it, Clinton. Right. But at the same time, of course, the argument is Clinton actually won by a whole three million votes. But the arrangement of the college system. Now, something else about um, what Senator here has said, because he's my senator. For 2020. He says he's on sabbatical. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was very excited when I, when I saw him winning the, 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 the what was it, the nominations. Because these are my young people. Yeah. He has said about polls indicating Raila is winning and doesn't win. You see, that is a tired narrative. Yes. I'm extremely tired. In 2007, we all, if, uh, if, if polls had shown Raila was winning, we all saw what happened and we all accept. <laughs> Karori will accept that even his principal, Ruto, yeah. was the one who put up a fight more than anybody else <laughs> to defend that victory. <laughs> Judge Krigler from South Africa told us really, and everybody, we know what happened. <laughs> In 2013, eyes were on the Supreme Court. We saw how the Mutunga court behaved. Mm. Really, at the very worst, what could have happened, there would have been a runoff, at the very worst. In 2017, we saw what happened. We saw the verdict from the Supreme Court. So you cannot decide that. So according to you, the, the polls have always been right. So I think yes. not always what right, changed, but yeah. an indicator of right. what was on the ground. True. Okay. So I'm not seeing anything different now. But I'm not saying polls are always right. Yeah. But I'm saying you cannot use that argument okay. that <laughs> polls put a rail ahead in 2017 and he lost. Yeah. Because he didn't lose. The facts are there. <laughs> So if we are doing guesswork, yeah. yes, but it's not guesswork. <laughs> okay. We're talking about facts. So you're also giving Rail around one? I think round one. Okay. Trevor, yeah. I think there is something, there is a context to this which we need to look at our polls. Yeah. If you go to page seven of Nation, mm -hmm. there are very interesting statistics there. That's what I'm telling you. And I am on record at a personal level. Whether Kipchumba Karuri is leading, whether it is whoever, I don't take polls, I don't take polls uh, uh, for any importance at a personal level, for I know what goes through polls. I was a candidate in Wasengishu, and one time a gentleman from an opinion polling company approached me, I will not name the company, he approached me and told me, you see, these are the polls we have taken, but uh, we need you to give us 150,000 to increase, to give you 15% uh, uh, more. <laughs> I asked him, but you have the polls already. 
I am leading. Why do you want to, uh, for me to give you 150,000 to lie to myself? So every <laughs> time I look at these polls, I remember that incident in a certain hotel in Eldoret. So, and there, there is something I need to draw our viewers to. Look at the race in Kakamega County between Fernandez Baraza and, and Malala. Look at another race, Simba Arati and Ezekiel Machogu. Oh, no, no. Yeah. And then there is another interesting race between uh, the one that they have called it between uh, between in Nyamir in Viga between Molba, Wilberforce or Tichilo yeah. and Moses Akaranga. A uh, Trevor have been in the ground. It is you can't tell even when you are in that ground. And if you are even to ask your viewers here, these three races you can't tell. And for this opinion poll to tell us like in Kisi, Simba Arat is a sixty percent. And uh, Machogu at 12 is a lie because if you go there, you there are other even candidates who are who are polling. If you it, the, the figure will be it will be a, a tight race because yeah. there are four as the Mio candidates, one Kenya Kwanza, but with the clan dynamics in Kisi, it points to a different race. Look at also Kiambu. Yeah, you will realize that there are, there are things there. But what we are saying is, and what I'm saying at a personal level is. I just take polls as a feel-good uh, kind of a stopgap measure. But also, with uh, the way our politics is done, and with how some opinion poll companies have been consistent yeah. with uh, polling one person, I, at a personal level, polls I have, uh, even when they are done yeah. at a place I know, I just take them as being opinion polls. And then again, the best thing is uh, four days, or is it five days, five we will have the real poll. Okay. So I still tell Kenyans yeah. it is a good thing, but I have my issues with that's why I have gone to this page yeah. to highlight races which Kenyans know it is a neck to neck. Okay, yeah. but Professor Omenya, you say there's nothing that's going to tilt the skills now, five days to the polls, right. there's not much going right. on. But doesn't this then boil down to sheer numbers? Because we can see even on the breakdown here, we can see Tarakaniti, William Ruto is at 80.2%. Right. Mm -hmm. But we've noticed before in the elections that when the numbers start coming in, mm. that is where now the difference comes in. And right. the percentages that we're getting here doesn't give us the sheer numbers. Right. Will this just boil down then to the voter turnout? Well, I mean, uh, just a quick bit. Uh, the fact that, uh, and, and, and I agree with my colleagues, um, the fact that uh, we are corrupt as a nation and we don't do our things properly does not mean that science is wrong. It just means that, uh, you know, we actually behave in ways that science cannot predict accurately. So the problem is not the polls. The problem are those people who rig elections <laughs> and, and the ones who try to bribe Kipchumba. <laughs> those are the problems. The problem is not the science. The science of polling has been there for very many years. And if you sample correctly, you'll get it. And, and, and still, just a quick point to the poll. And I've said that before, that actually we have very young and useless pollsters. Because uh, I am a researcher, I, 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 of course I research other things, and sometimes we do surveys. You want surveys to mimic reality as much as possible. So you, you, you for example, look at the patterns of uh, William Ruto's voters, the profiles, the regional issues, all the, the factors that you think might affect the election. Raila, the age issues, uh, issues around uh, uh, central turnouts and so on. So that when you're developing your sample, your sample is not just numbers. Your sample must consider all these parameters. And if you sample accurately, in fact, your polls will have very, very, and, and of course, with, with the correct numbers, your margins of error are, you know, are really going to be very, very, uh, 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 very, very low. One. The second one, and I'm not afraid to say that on air. Yeah. This numbers nonsense has to stop. We know what has happened in the past. The, what has happened in the past is, is, is just plain rigging, actually. <laughs> it is not an issue of numbers. You cannot convince me, and I've done calculations over and over again. You cannot convince me that you can actually win elections in this country by simply winning Rift Valley and Central Province. It's not true. It is not true, those calculations, we've looked at them, we've looked at the numbers and so on. Last elections uh, were, were won on a, on a basis of 95% of uh, Mount Kenya region, the entire Mount Kenya region going to Uhuru, with a 98% turnout. Yeah. And in the Rift Valley, uh, we're, we're looking at almost uh, 80 something, in fact, almost 89, uh, almost hitting 90% um, in terms of turnout, and 85% of that vote going to, again, the, uh, that particular team. Those numbers are impossible, put simply. 
They are not possible. Those numbers can only be cooked. Uh, the second thing, of course, um, uh, again, looking at numbers, now we are saying it's numbers games, we have looked at this thing, and if, um, if the voting pattern is exactly the same, yeah. exactly the same, and I've done the calculations myself, if they're exactly the same, Ruto must still get, you know, uh, over 80% in central and get a, a, basically 100% of the vote that voted Ruto in the Rift Valley. That's possible. The Rift Valley one is possible. But for Ruto to get 80 to 90% in central, that's an impossibility. The rest of the country sh is shifty. There are areas where it's gained, there are areas where Raila's lost, there's areas where Raila's gained a little bit and so on. So again, if you look at that number, um, you know, Ruto basically has to get, uh, you know, um, in fact, over 80%, anything below 80% from, and we're, and we're looking at the Mount Kenya region, we're not just looking at central Kenya. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, which, which I don't think, uh, even the pollsters that have been paid by, by the Kenya Kwanzaa group uh, are, are not giving those, those numbers. Yeah. We don't have any polls indicating that Ruto is going to get over 80% uh, you know, in that region. So far, I've not seen any at all. Okay. Yeah. So yes, the turnout will be very important. But I think uh, the only, my only prayer is that IBC, for the first time, conducts a free and fair election, especially when it comes to presidential, uh, so that Kenyans can actually know. This whole narrative that, uh, you know, three quarters of the country, that uh, basically uh, seven out of nine regions in this country are irrelevant yeah. in terms of numbers in the election is hogwash, is okay. bullshit, and is not based on any science. Okay. <laughs> Let me bring in Prof. Prof, what could tilt the skills? Yes. What could tilt the skills at this particular point, five days the polls? To say tilting the scale would be in favor of whichever candidate. Either now Ruto will come from nowhere and beat Raila, or that Raila will now increase his margin beyond what is predicted. That's what tilting the scale would mean. Uh, before I say that, let me support this argument a bit that uh, the tyranny of numbers, the Mutai Nguyen tyranny of numbers, <laughs> that was a narrative and it worked. And it can still work today. How would you explain? How do you explain the fact that uh, the Kikuyu and the Kalenjin are just about 30% of the population? How then do you push them <laughs> to get you to near 50% of the voters? The vote. anyway, every time people go to vote, others don't vote at all or don't register. I think that's an impossibility. But that, that is politics. Even censors, even censors say there's the politics of censors. People have complained. Eh? So that is for another time. Now. I am not seeing anything that can push William Ruto to go beyond Raila. And the reason is simple. This is a, the science of patterns. You know, this guy started early. Correct. Mm. The natural law of the plateau and then you come down. <laughs> That's what is happening. You go up so fast. The natural thing is you'll begin to come down. So what is happening is natural. In fact, if these elections were to be held two months from now, Ruto will hardly make it 38% at the end of the vote. Hardly. To hit vote will be an impossibility. He started so early. He exhausted himself. His opponents were watching him. Remember, and the Karodi will accept, my, my, my senator, he's playing against experienced players. Hmm. Raila Odinga, I have always had a problem to imagine Ruto can beat Raila in terms of purely just who the two are, <laughs> you know? And then there's another guy who is underrated by some people at their own peril, Uhuru Kenyatta. Correct. So when you combine Uhuru Kenyatta and Raila Odinga, and they are watching you as you dribble around and dance in the field, they see you coming. What you want to notice, Trevor, is the finish. Look at the kind of finish as Mio has. Just look at the finish. If you, are a, if you are an observer of Kenyan politics, don't look at anything else. Just look at the power of the finish and the power in the finish. Then you realize there's almost nothing Ruto can do to, to, to change this, the situation. Okay. Give you I think do you I, agree with that, that the, first of all, that the president is underrated? His influence no, 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 no. in this entire uh, election is uh, underrated? My good senior, Manyora, <laughs> knows this. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> and how our politics has played out for the longest time. Incumbency in this part of the world as an issue, 
the same problem it, it had with Uru in the first uh, Moi debacle might have. Actually, I believe if Raila was to campaign on his own without Uru Kenyatta, he will get more votes than he will get with Uru Kenyatta. True. Because there are things that Raila has been standing for that when he comes close to Uru Kenyatta, they diminish. No matter how powerful a light is, mm -hmm. when you introduce darkness, you diminish the light. So you dim it. But coming back to figures, and I want us to work with the good uh, senior ac academicians here to, to numbers. I know Professor <laughs> Mayer said it's all wash, <laughs> But look at it this way. In 2017A, and 2017b mm -hmm. when we stay with these numbers and then again there's something trevor yes. one percent in kajiado is not equivalent to one percent in kiamu that is true that is what these opinion polls presupposes that this country is at a at, at a place where everything is even constant yes there's even distribution of population and even Which voters the other thing because i saw no, I, science I, doesn't work like that I saw yeah, another I coming. saw another opinion poll somewhere where somebody has uh, used around 30,000 people and in this one I think it's around 4,600 6, or something. Yes, yeah, so 6,000. That also informs something but let us go back to figures that we can talk about here. The NASA of 20, 2017 there was Musalia Mudavadi, there was Wetangula. Look at Bungoma today where it is mm. and look at Bungoma then. And then you go to even the coastal county counties outside Nyanza province, where does Raila Odinga get another stronghold where you can count as a stronghold? You know, because outside Nyanza province, the rest have been turned into battlegrounds. Look at what is happening at the moment in, for example, Kakamega at Bungoma. Bungoma actually has been flipped, it's no longer a battleground. Look at, again, now you ask yourself, William Ruto in central Kenya and in Rift Valley, where they had a percentage. Has he held the fort? The answer is, even if you compare the polls at this moment in the last election, he's still doing favorably well. And that informs the figures. That's why I'm telling the good academician that if you are to go to the ground, Mambo is different. Mm -hmm. Because wh where, where is Raila getting these numbers? You know, the only places where we are voting in Kenya is the 47 plus the diaspora vote. Mm -hmm. Diaspora vote is 4,500. So let us say it is important for plus one. But for the 50%, <laughs> let us remain on the home ground. That's why I'm telling you, let us just extrapolate the looking of numbers and let us look at the numbers and the perspectives behind them. Okay. I have to take a quick break, Prof. I'll come to you. I don't know how to respond to you. But let's take a quick break, then we come back. See what you're saying also online at Trevor Beach at Citizen TV. Can you use the hashtag Daybreak? You can also text us on 22422. Tell us your name and where you're texting from. And then we'll read some of your views in just a bit.